All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group, and uh, this is your recap for Thursday, May 10th, uh, options and trades. Uh, so what a lovely day today. Um, S&P up almost a 1% on the day. Qs were up well over uh, a percent, not well over, but up over a percent. Uh, small caps were up another half a percent. Emerging markets uh, finally woke up today. EEM, with the help of the little bit of dollar softness, I would call it today, uh, really got those names going today. So a couple names to kind of point out in emerging markets, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so where are we? I always start with the S&P. Um, NVIDIA just reported. NVIDIA has... In Video has really run into the earnings report. They had a huge number that they put up, but um, they're re they're really overbought. I did not play them for earnings. I kind of we we talked about this we <laughs> in the trading room right before uh, right before the numbers came out. Uh, I said, "What do you guys think that they do?" Because I did not play them, um, and my thought was that um, they have a great quarter, but they go down. Uh, because they just ran too much into it uh, you know they're a little bit overbought you know and this will be a probably be a buying opportunity even though um, it's down just a, basically where it started the day again this seems to happen with some of these companies that everybody wants to own they run up like crazy into earnings so i wouldn't think any i think that's a very logical move uh, and again why i sat uh sat it out for a video but let's go ahead and, and, and talk about the overall market and just talk about the, the day we had and uh we'll we'll go from there but um we are now i would say pretty short term overbought um in the major averages the s p took out this version point of control that's kind of was the target for me uh, to kind of see what, what we do here, you know, in terms of the swing, you know, so green days every day since last, since last, what, Wednesday, uh, and a really sharp move higher. And I think that's what everybody was looking for. Um, are we overbought now? Pretty, pretty overbought in the short term. We're a 72 RSI. You could see the same thing for Qs or for NASDAQ futures, whichever one you prefer. Um, that always tells me, I like to use the one hour bar to tell me, especially for the indices or sectors, if we're really, really cooking, you know, which we're really, if we're really, really overbought. And uh, the Qs right now are a 73. You know, anything over, if you're not familiar with RSI, but basically anything over 70. Stocks can stay overbought for a long time, but usually the indices don't spend that much time in the short term. You know, notice the last time we were overbought here and we kind of came off for a little bit. So, you know, maybe we've got something something like that. Um, that would be really nice. So I'll talk a little bit. Oh, um, and, and also the, the option activity confirming that too. You know, I, I was actually joking around. I just tweeted this out. Um, op, uh, Trade Alert puts the, this number out every day, but total preliminary option volume of 22.1 million is 19 above recent average so you know much higher than, than average and um calls led puts 12.8 million shares to 9.2 so this is really overbought when i go over the option activity you know the numbers those numbers kind of uh you know just just back up what i was kind of thinking i think the option activity whenever i have to go on to two pages for option activity which i even left some names off we're really sizzling hot um so this what i'll say you know i always start with the bad in the beginning of the uh the calls but um this is the, kind of a contrarian sell signal for me when i see that everything is running this hot in the short term take your profits and i know i talked about that yesterday but we've i've had so many moves that were basically um you know pretty realized so you know let me just start with this trade that i had talked about and by the way i you know, we'll always put all of my trades, um, you know, talk about whether I'm in something or whether I'm not in something. So you never have to worry about that for me. Um, I will never talk about it. You know, you know I never say, oh, I called it. For me, it's either I'm in it or I'm not in it. Um, and I'll say that, wow, you know, I said that with the solar ETF today. What a huge move. Fortunately, I'm, I'm not in that one. But, you know, this was the tweet that I sent out last week on PayPal. Um, and I didn't see too many people talking about this. Um, I said PayPal is the winner for the most aggressive call buying last week. Post earnings, as I said in the earlier tweet, not the best looking chart in my opinion. But look at the call activity that they went through. Just huge trades out in September, October. Uh, really big trades that they put up last week. So, you know, sometimes every once in a while I talk about how option activity is not the end all and be all. This was a really, really good signal. And if you do follow option activity, I think you had to take this trade. It doesn't get much better. Very similar to the option activity that we saw in DVN. 
uh, which was just stellar activity. You know, Micron in the past, you know, are just, a, you know, a couple examples. Um, BHP is a trade working out for me that saw a huge block of calls uh, that went up. But again, it doesn't get much, much easier or, or better option activity than, than what we saw in PayPal. And again, it came into the 200-day moving average. Look at this thing now in PayPal. So at this point, as I'm bringing this up, I mean, just a huge move since that bounce off the 200-day moving <laughs> average. And uh, that's lovely. Um, that's that's really lovely. So, um, you know, at this point, you want to be, in my opinion, you know, I, I took a lot of my trade off in PayPal. Uh, I've got a very small piece left. Um, I, You know, at this point, and as well, what you do is you kind of manage a little bit. You take off your trade and you, you roll it out and up. Um, or, or roll it if, you know, this sense I was already out in October, just roll it up a little bit. Um, use, a, use a strike a little bit further out of the money. This way, you know, I'm, I'm completely locking in uh, my winner. So I wanted to talk about this one because, um, you know, I said it this weekend. I said this, that's, it doesn't get any better than that in terms of option. If you're somebody who likes option activity or likes to follow it, um, then, you know, and this for me, like this would not have been a trade that I, that I would have taken. Um, I thought the chart was really looking ugly. It looked like it was going to break down here. Um, it actually saved the 200-day moving average, broke below one day, and it's just so really a, a nice snapback rally. Where it goes from here, I have no idea. I, I think it, you know from from $71 to, to almost 80 bucks. You can't ask for much more if you're not taking profits here. Um, again, you, you, you want to let your winners run, but I mean, what a, what a huge short-term move. All right, so a couple, you know, I'll show you what I did in the trading room today. We'll talk a little bit about sectors too, but, you know, I had put this EMB trade on a couple days. We saw some calls, which is, you know, also just one of a trade that I like to do from time to time when something gets really oversold. You know, we talked about being overbought on the, uh, on the indices, but this EMB, this is emerging market bonds, just absolutely obliterated. And uh, I think the, the RSI on this was like uh, in the single digits, maybe, maybe hit a 10 on this thing. Lower, lower, um, lower teens, I would say. That is really oversold. And it's bounced before when it's gotten to oversold level. Uh, so I've seen this before. This was after the election, uh, the U.S. election, and everything emerging markets sold off. And it recovered all the way. So um, I was just looking for a bounce in this thing. I had more than a double from the last uh, place where I at. I put this trade on, took a target uh, immediately, um, and then it went a little bit lower, and, and I added to it, and uh, I was able to, to take it off for more than a double, um, which you could see here. Um, the last, very last piece I took off was at a dollar, uh, dollar twenty, but the majority of it I got out around a dollar, dollar ten. Um, BHP. Um, has been a nice winner for me. I've went over this chart now a couple times in BHP. Talked about how I really liked it on the weekly chart. Uh, so I'll show you what I meant on the weekly chart. So again, this is, you know, I'm not trying to just give, you know, a pat on the back, but just it's nice when you put in the, the work and the research and things really work. But we talked about how you had a really nice support level, which is right around where those calls uh, came in on the weekly chart in BHP. So really moving up pretty nicely. Um, so I did take a little bit more off of that one. I, that's an August position. So I've got enough time on that one to kind of let it run, so, which is kind of what I'm trying to do right now. Um, I traded LUV. LUV is always a difficult, I was kind of moaning about this trade after I put it on. Uh, put it on for $1.15. And, you know, uh, not the biggest trade in the world. I took it off for $1.35. Um, so out, out of that day trade. Again, you know, nice what 20% profits a little bit more a little more than yeah but 20% profits on the trade perfect um, PayPal there's one of my exits on PayPal um, Zions I thought this was a good trade today the banks were super super um, nice today but Zions I was playing for a breakout trade I took the majority of this trade off already hit two um, two big uh, price targets in that uh, again keeping a small piece on $1.90 paid $1.68. Uh, I mentioned LUV, scalped a little bit of puts, spy puts in midday for the midday sell off. BlackRock, um, again, I'm happy to show you my new trades. Uh, BlackRock, uh, because this, this video is for both members and, and outside members. Um, so nice BlackRock trade went up today. 
I like the chart in BlackRock. You know, I wasn't really looking to add any new trades today. Today was more of a day. You could see exit, 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 exit. Even the new trades got out of most of them. But look at this nice trade that went up. This is a almost $800,000 in premium. I'll show you the chart in BlackRock. So new trade for me did not take it off or anything like that. Um, and you could see uh, looks pretty good, right? Right above the the, um, the value area and above the 200-day. Did not close on the highs. Um, I left myself a little bit of room to 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 add more to it. But this is a tricky name to play in options. The options are usually wide. So what I did was a um, you know I won't go into all the details. Well, I guess you could you probably saw my trade there. But it's a double. What I did was a double vertical. And this is one of those reasons. This is one of those names that that. Um, Options are very good. It can be because this, these names, you know, it's a it's a five hundred thirty six dollar stock. Are you going to play this name in cash? I don't know. <laughs> so what I what's nice about this is you could use options to replicate a stock strategy or do close to it. What I did was I bought a call spread and I shorted a put spread. Um, so not exactly, uh, you know, full full downside. You you know, it's not an, exactly a risk reversal. Uh, it's basically called a double vertical. Bought call spread, shorted shorted a put spread. So um, we'll see how that turns out here in the next uh, in the next few days. But like that, also took some took a target in TD Ameritrade. This was speaking of a limited. This was a limited risk risk reversal. Bought calls, sold put spreads, um, and then Vive. You know, again these these names. Holy cow! Um, so uh, you know, again you, you got what you were looking for. I took this trade off today after five or six days of gains in Vive. Could it go higher? Sure. May, probably leaving a little bit of money off the table again. Look at Splunk. Splunk I took off the other day, and uh, this thing has been in ramp mode. Uh, same thing with with all the other names. You know, here's my index, the business technology index. Um, remember what I said a couple weeks ago? I was on Bloomberg, and I talked about how when everybody was saying that possibly um, tech is is death to tech, death to tech. Um, I went on Bloomberg and I said I don't think so. I think there's you know, I think just names have reported earnings and they're digesting. Uh, they've been in focus. Facebook was really in focus. What I was concentrating on was where there was strength and this and all in the enterprise application infrastructure software names. This is business technology. So it's a so it's an index of, uh, you know, all the companies that are involved that's you know small companies and and some larger companies but you know your salesforce um, you could see the performance today zen was up another 2.3 percent ca was up two percent i mentioned splunk already semantic was up going into earnings um, vmware was up 3.9 percent today so really strong all right so other sectors that were strong um oh by the way let me let me mention this stock too um that saw option activity today. PBR. How can I forget the name PBR? But um, this is a name that I've been long for a while. Look at this breakout in PBR. Uh, I've been long. I think I'm up about 60% in this name. I've been long this name since it uh, re was it recapturing the yeah. Um, I think back in September. Yeah, when it broke the 200-day moving average. I've been long this PBR at 970, right, right around 974, and it's up to 16 bucks. Um, but nice bull flag here. Move out of consolidation. I don't have trend lines drawn here, but uh, just an explosion upward here. I'm also long rig, which has been. Um, I think I'm just up like I'm up eight or nine percent in this rig since I put it on. I put it on on the first day where I saw this. Look at this move in rig. Um, and I'm also still long a little piece of, of, of Devon Energy, DVN, which there was more calls that went up. I have to check open interest to see if they added to that position in, uh, in Devon Energy. Um, I'll show you the trade. It's right here. Uh, 4,000 of the July 42 calls. So again, keep an eye on that open interest. Um, I don't even think I have it on my recap. So again, you know, more than, uh, you know, <laughs> more than a page of call activity you know, please, please, please take some take some money off the table. Again, this video is just for information purposes only. But after a rally like this, my goodness, so many names have broken out on the 52-week high. Um, just unbelievable price action. Let me show you one more thing that um, we went over this. We we gave a webinar member webinar on this earlier in the week. Um, this on the 
medical device companies, you know, and I've talked about how healthcare and biotech has been such a hard trade. Look at this medical device and equipment company. I mentioned the inflows back here. I put this trade on. This thing is just beasting um, right now. 52 week high. So that's where the strength is in all these names. You want to take a look at a couple of these names? Unreal. So I put out a list. Uh, I put out a, um, a paper on this. Uh, you can get a hold of that, but you do have to be a member. But I talked about you know exactly what these names do. There's about 10 charts that kind of look like this. ABMD is one of them. Uh, again, pretty small cap names. They don't trade a lot of volume, but if you want to know where the strength is in healthcare and biotech, it is not in the big biotech. It is not in the big healthcare names. It is in these little uh, equipment slash medical device companies and very, very strong. So I, I have the paper on it. If you want to read it, um, just sign up to be a member and uh, you, you can get that uh, research piece. But unbelievable to, and I don't see very many people talking about this either that these names are in absolute um, beast mode so it kind of reminds me that's why I brought up the application and enterprise software names you know there's just there's different pockets of strength you just have to be able to um, to find them so um, also just you know full full on uh, participation today if I didn't say that already you know I mentioned uh, a few different areas, but metals and mining were also pretty strong today. Um, oh, I did not mention emerging markets. I'm sorry about that. Um, I did restructure a trade today. Look at this uh, chart in EEM. Um, EEM did not finish exactly on the highs, but breaking out of a downward trend line. So look at this thing. So if you want something that, that has not performed well, uh, the Chinese internet names are starting to perk up too pretty nicely. Uh, KWEB, which I'm also long, was up, uh, was your best performing group other than the solar ETF. Um, so really strong and I, and, and I think pretty good. Look at the volume that they put up. This I would probably say was one of the best option trades of the day. Um, I'll ignore the buy rights, but look at the, um, the volume out in September 48. Um, big block here and a big block here in the September 48. Uh, look at the volume that they traded total on that line 83,000 of the EM September 48 calls I think best looking trade actually of the day all right guys I will leave it there have a great night and um, I'll see you tomorrow